WWE aired a Nigel McGuinness special on the network called Chasing the Magic, the Nigel McGuinness story. Nigel had to retire before he finally achieved his dream, which was making it to the WWE. He's just an announcer on NXT UK now, which he is a great announcer. He's by far the best announcer in the whole company, in my opinion. He does a great job, but uh, he never got to it achieve his dream of becoming a wrestler in the WWE. So this documentary starts off at Ring of Honor. They show the fans going nuts for him, cheering for him. They have several independent wrestlers now in the WWE talking. Cesaro, Seth Rollins, Samoa Joe, Daniel Bryan, Kurt Angle, and then AJ Styles. And uh, we finally open up with uh, Nigel McGuinness. They have Seth Rollins saying he's one of the greatest performers that nobody might ever know, which um, it's not entirely true, but certainly uh, if you're a a casual fan of wrestling and just watch WWE, that certainly could be the case. So Nigel's talking about how he got into wrestling and watching WWF in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, of course he talks about SummerSlam 1992, which took place in London, England at Wembley Stadium. Uh, One of the most popular SummerSlams of all time uh, because of the crowd. It's actually, I think, still the biggest WWE crowd. Maybe the WrestleMania in Dallas probably topped it, but it definitely outdrew WrestleMania 3, even though WWE would never tell you that. They're showing him behind the scenes interacting with a lot of wrestlers. He's really into magic tricks. And uh, they even show uh, from NXT TakeOver Chicago 2 this past June, he actually took a bump in the Gargano Ciampa match. I forgot that. I forgot he actually did that, but... uh, he uh, took Gargano through Ciampa into the announce booth, and Ciampa like, yeah, kicked him in the head by accident. Now he's going into how we got into wrestling. It shows progression um, from uh, not only training, he uh, moves to the United States and goes to Ohio, uh, then uh, all the way to Ring of Honor when he breaks some of uh, Joe's, I think it was a two-year title reign as ROH champion. He wins the ROH title, even though Joe had his foot on the ropes. That was definitely a great moment. I remember seeing that match. Um, I think Joe left probably for TNA around that time. That was a that was a big deal seeing him uh, win the title. One of the most famous Ring of Honor matches of all time is Brian Danielson against Nigel McGuinness when they unified the Pure Championship with the ROH World Championship. I remember watching the match. Um, I watched it online after it happened, and it was just unbelievably violent. Like they literally, it was like a. It, it's hard to like envision. This match taking place today because none of this stuff would be allowed. And this wasn't that long ago. I mean, when you look at wrestling in the 90s, you say, oh, my God, they would never do this now. But this was 2006. This was too long, but 13 years ago. What they're doing here is, like, you can tell there's no... It's shocking that Daniel Bryan's still wrestling. It's not surprising at all. Nigel McGuinness is retired. The amount of head blows, them smashing. Nigel McGuinness, one of the most sick spots is him smashing into the ring post. It's just doing it the hard way. Their headbutts are just violent. And, of course, the match ends with Daniel Bryan elbowing Nigel McGuinness is basically caving his damn head in. And the amount of blood, it's just, oh, man. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely a classic match. It's definitely, um, you know, definitely put both of them. Uh, made them both bigger stars for sure. After the match, the fans give Nigel a standing ovation. The only thing that sucks is WWE had to make the whole thing black and white because of the blood. Then uh, he finally gets signed by WWE. This has always been his dream. He really wanted to go there, and uh, fortunately, it all fell apart. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing this story that WWE uh had to release Nigel or he left because he could never get cleared. Uh, he was honest with his medicals. Daniel Bryan, he ta- he was on this documentary. He admitted he was not honest at all and with his medicals, which is why he's probably there. Um, Nigel McGuinness also made the... Um, he, I don't know if you can call it a mistake, but like um, he had no health insurance, so he has a torn bicep, and WWE's not going to sign you unless you get that torn bicep fixed. They don't have to sign Nigel yet, uh, mainly because... Uh, because the physical came out, like they, they they haven't actually signed him, even though they they've offered him a deal. Um, without uh, him getting that bicep fix, they were not going to offer him the contract. So he can't. Get, he doesn't have the health insurance to do it. He doesn't have the money, and then he's thinking to himself, "It makes perfect sense. Like if I go get surgery, I take a spot, torn bicep is probably what six to eight months. It's one of the worst injuries you can get. And back. What if they're not interested?" What if they think, eh, you know, we're going to pass. We already signed Brian Danielson. I don't know if we're going to take you now. 
So he had a very difficult road. And eventually he leaves um, WWE without a contract, which was absolutely devastating for the guy because his whole goal was to get to WWE. Now, uh, Daniel Bryan, his whole goal, like he wanted to be a wrestler. It would, like He didn't mean too much to him to get to WWE. Nigel always wanted to go to WWE. So after everything falls apart, he calls TNA, and he is signed there quickly, and he becomes Desmond Wolf. Uh, very quickly, he's put into a big program with Kurt Angle and TNA, and they just have this incredible match. It was the co-main event. I remember that was actually one of TNA's best pay-per-views. I think it was called uh, Turning Point, if that's what I remember. Um, you had Kurt Angle and Nigel McGinnis, Desmond Wolf, we're going to call him in the co-main event and the main event. I think you had AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, and triple threat match for the TNA World title. It wasn't as good as the other one they had years ago, but that was uh, that was just a great show, one of the best TNA shows of all time. Then in TNA, everything gets you know just a disaster for Nigel. Um, he's diagnosed with hepatitis B, and that is a nightmare and pretty much ends his career in TNA. And one thing he really doesn't understand is how could you get hepatitis B? Um, one thing you look at it, uh, there's three ways you're going to get that. One, dirty needles, syringes, uh, never been around that, uh, never had unprotected sex. Uh, that's what he says. Um, that Those are the two ways you get it. And the third way, if you're a wrestler is, of course, when you blade, that's obviously very easily. But he says uh, all his, the wrestlers who he's wrestled have never actually had uh, hepatitis. They've all been tested, and they had, no one's ever come up positive for hepatitis B. So it's, But that's obviously, come on, that's clearly easily how he can get it. Um, that really uh, sucks, and that just ruined everything in TNA. And uh, any chance that WWE would see what he was doing in TNA and then give him a second chance was just shot to hell there. And also another killer for him. Things just uh, keep going downhill. So what happens is you have 90 days to clear this virus. You have to stay at home. And he does for 90 days, but he doesn't clear the virus. He's one of the 10% who gets hepatitis uh, B who doesn't clear the virus. So up next for him is... He uh, has to be, be prescribed medication, or not prescribed, he has to buy certain medication. He can't afford it because he's not making enough money, but the fact that he's not making enough helps him because he gets new medication, he gets a free trial, and he not only clears hepatitis in six months, he is immune to it, so that's just completely gone. But then as, like, last week of treatment, TNA releases him, which you can criticize TNA, but at the same time, they're probably thinking to themselves, do we have to pay for his treatment? How is this going to affect us? What if another wrestler gets sick from this? I don't know. I, th- I don't know if it was a Hogan and Bischoff decision because I think this is when they were in full control. But it, you know, it was a, definitely a bad, uh, another, you know, bad blow to him. And there's almost no chance WWE signs him, so I think he just has to go back to Ring of Honor. Next is there was. He, Nigel's basically left at no choice, so WWE won't take him now because the hepatitis and the bicep injury, which he doesn't have the money to have, um, even though he's cleared hepatitis, the biceps is still another problem. He just doesn't have six to eight thousand to spend on a surgery, and then you know in six months are they going to sign him? Maybe they're not even interested at this point. And, uh, going back to TNA, he was not interested. He was just fired by TNA. And his body just cannot handle the style at Ring of Honor. So he was in a decision where there's like no options left. And he just decides to retire. So Nigel basically books a farewell tour. And, um, you know, he uh, books a whole bunch of independent shows all around the U.S. and the United Kingdom. And this is it for him. One thing that was really cool seeing Trent Seven just give him. You know, this this ultimate respect speech telling him how much he inspired him. And then, you know, you see him um, at the uh, NXT Championship taping like eight years later, both of them sitting in the stands. That was actually really cool. This is nuts. Nigel McGinnis has his final match in December of 2011, 18th of 2011. And they show him in his hotel room after he's had his final match. It's in this really small gym. And WB under doc in, in this documentary, they clearly made they show that it's like a really small gym. You can even see construction on one side of the the arena. And then as he's in his hotel room, he sees Daniel Bryan win the tail at TLC when he catches in the Money in the Bank. 
Daniel Bryan sends him a text message. He says, hey, Nigel, they just gave me the World Heavyweight Championship. I wish you were here to share it with me. I'm sorry that you're not. So Nigel, uh, he does some commentary in Ring of Honor, and he sucks um, to a lot of people. I didn't, actually, no, I don't want to say that. I heard him, like, a lot of people were saying he sucked online. I remember seeing a lot of tweets about him. Um, and he was even there, basically, their GMA in their matches. And then finally... Uh, when WWE does their UK show, uh, that's when they call Nigel and they need someone with an English background, and uh, Michael Cole hired him, basically. They show him interacting with Moro Ronaldo um, backstage at uh, the UK show. And um, again, I think uh, Nigel just comes off really genuine here. You want to learn how much Michael Cole um, is in, tr- in control of the announcers in WWE. He has a lot of power there. And uh, it was him who hired Nigel, not Vince. After Nigel kills it at the the UK special, he gets added to the NXT announce team. They're all heavily praising his commentary, which he was uh, he does a great job. And uh, Daniel Bryan even makes a comment. I think he's more happier now than he was wrestling. And you look at the way he was beating up his body; you can tell why. Michael Cole is heavily praising Nigel. It really looks like they have him groomed for a more commentating opportunities maybe on the main roster which i'm sure no one wants to see because vince is going to ruin it but still it'd be really cool to see him get there uh, to that point so overall i thought this was an outstanding documentary they showed that uh, he has a kid they never show his wife but uh, he has a, uh, a kid now he's a father he's just doing a great job um really likable guy and uh you wish nothing but the best for guy. i know i mean i said earlier no one wants to see him <laughs> get chewed out by Vince McMahon on the main roster become a wwe puppet like all the other guys have been but at the same time it'd be really cool to see him get to the main roster and uh be one of their top announcers but he also does a great job at nxt and um i really think the way michael cole was talking about him that wwe has a lot of plans for nigel mcginnis as an announcer going forward